You're a small business, very small. Six employees, six computers, one switch, one access point, an ISP router, one subnet, and a network attached storage that serves as a file server. That's right, no domain controller servers, no clustering, everything is flat and simple. But you still want to protect your network assets. You still want to be able to connect to your file servers from remote, give permissions to the management to specific domains, and you decided to buy a firewall, a small firewall, not too fancy. So here are the seven things you must do in order to start and work with your firewall. All right, so the following is, um, are the basic steps that you as a small business will need to do once you get your 48 or any other firewall in your business. Now, the very first thing, remember, once you uh, configure your firewall, you're the administrator of that firewall. You're the super admin. So you will need to hardening your um, admin account. You can use two-factor authentication. You can also use an email-based mean to get a token in your email. I have uh, done a video on that before, and you can just click the uh, link above and uh, go straight to it. Another thing is trusted host. You will need to configure either one, two, or three IP addresses that the admin can actually connect from to the management uh, interface of your 48. So configure your office address, configure your home address. Don't let anyone get into your 48 from outside. The second thing that you can do is to segment your network. Now, even if you have only six or 10 employees and three of them are in the marketing department and four of them are doing sales, Create a new interface. You have lots of uh, switch ports on your 48. And even if don't, you can create virtual uh, LANs. So let's create an interface. Let's just name our interface sales. The role of that interface is local area network. Just assign specific um, subnet to that interface. This is a private IP address use for management HTTPS and SSH HTTPS to get uh, to that interface through the GUI and SSH is through the command line and just uh, configure a DHCP server. Now you probably have only about five to six employees so don't use the full pool. You can use uh, if in our case it's 10.0.9.2 so let's use it up until dot 10. Now, um, you can do many other things. Uh, we will not get into it right now, but this is the basics of just creating a new interface and be sure to connect those uh, employees through their computers to that specific switch on your 40 gate, either using a switch or directly. All right, now once you've built the interfaces, you can actually start to configure some rules. Let's just use basic rules for now. Uh, we head over to policy and objects, IPv4 policies, create new, and let's just create a sales policy. Now, we're not limiting no one in our sales department. So the incoming interface is sale, the outgoing interface is our WAN interface, the interface that is connected to our ISP router. As for source, currently we will use all, but we will um, create a firewall address object uh, very soon, and we can actually use it in our firewall policies. In terms of service, we will allow any service, any protocol to uh, go through this um, firewall policy. Uh, we will enable NAT. We will uh, not use currently our security profiles. We will do it soon. 
and we will log just about every session not only security events session all right so that's our sales policy let's create a new policy let's name it marketing and incoming interface is our marketing outgoing is our when source all destination all service all let's just enable login for all sessions all right the next thing to do is to actually create a virtual LAN for our access point now there are times when you need to create another broadcast domain which is on top of physical ports so if your 48 has eight ports you can actually create on top of each port VLANs, virtual LANs that you can connect to that switch and from there to outsource employees or other employees. So let's just uh, use the sales port to create another interface, which is our VLAN interface. Let's name it um, outsource2 and we will use a tagging of 300. Let's also use it here. And the interface, as we said, is the sales interface. Now let's configure an IP address as we do in just about every subnet, every LAN that we have. So we'll use the 192.168.2.1 slash 24. And we'll use administrative access, HTTPS and SSH. And we will actually list the full pool in our DHCP server we will not limit it to um, only specific number of IP addresses. Okay, now once we have that VLAN on our sales interface, that's VLAN 300, we need to create a policy, a policy that will allow any traffic that is coming from that VLAN to get out to the internet. So we will again create a new policy, let's name it outsource2. The incoming interface is our VLAN, is outsource uh, 2, and the outgoing is our WAN interface. Now, anyone can connect to that VLAN, anyone can go anywhere, anywhere, but in terms of service, we will not allow any service out there. We will use HTTPS, HTTP, all right, and DNS. All right, now let's just um, apply that. And now we have a new policy that allows anyone that connects to it uh, to get out to the internet only using HTTP, HTTPS, and DNS. All right, now let's create a firewall address object. Why do we need a firewall address object? Well, sometimes we have different computers on our um, on our subnet that we want to limit or to grant access to specific services and that's a good way to create a policy that is more granular so to create a firewall address object we'll go to policy and objects addresses now let's decide let's decide that our firewall address object will be uh, for the marketing division that's at the 10.0.5.0 subnet and we know that we have a user that has the 10.0.5.3 IP address and we want to limit it from sending pings, sending ICMP protocol pings. So how do we do that? We go to the policy and objects, addresses, create new address. Now let's name our computer uh, limited ICMP. That's a nice name. Let's use the IP range and let's use the 10.0.5.2 up to 10.0.5.2 or have no we said that it will be uh, three, and the interface is the marketing interface okay we can also use static route configuration if we want to use it in a specific static route but uh, we don't need it for now let's just uh, 
apply that and now let's create a new policy and in our new policy we will name it no ICMP for that specific device so the incoming interface is marketing the outgoing is the when interface and the source is the new limited ISP source that we have just created destination all service ICMP we want to limit it from sending ICMP ping so we'll choose all ICMP and ping and in the action we will choose deny okay so now we have a policy that denies ICMP or denies pings from that specific users now for that policy to work we need to actually move that policy before the marketing policy so our file will, will look at that policy will understand that uh, that specific device which belongs to the marketing division doesn't have full access the same as the other user it limits him from sending ICMP now the next thing you will need to do is to create a static route so that all packets from different interfaces will know where to go in order to get out to the internet so to do so you'll go to network static route create new static route now i have already created one here that's my static route the destination is all zeros that is every packet that is destined anywhere and doesn't have a route in the routing table will go through that static route you will need to um, uh, choose the interface in our case that's the when interface which is connected to our isp router we will not look at the administrative distance or the priority of that route but know that you can actually prioritize different static routes on your FortiGate firewall all right so we actually reached our final step final configuration which is applying security profiles to your uh, policies now you can find security profiles just beneath policy and objects and you have different security profiles each security profile have its own knowledge base and you you can find dozens of videos in my channel that explains how to work with antivirus web filter dns filter the idea here the idea is now you the idea is that you actually create a security profile and then you apply it on your policy so let's just open one policy let's edit it and here you can find the different security profiles once you enable it it actually scans the traffic and looks for viruses malware spam um, domains that are not permitted and other things 